been in the adult industry for about three and a half years. I started out only doing OnlyFans content. Um, and very recently, I have branched out into doing like studio or pro scenes. And when I started out, I, um, I had no idea that this would become my full-time job. Like I was just trying things out and I, I wanted to have fun with my name. So I picked Tomie because my favorite horror manga mm -hmm. by Jun Ito is called Tomie. The main character um, who the manga is named after is like a, this like supernatural succubus like creature which i thought was really like sexy and fucked up like <laughs> um in the story she like seduces men and basically leads them like either into insanity or lead them to their demise and like that was like the kind of like fiction that i really enjoyed i love horror so <laughs> so i named myself tomie i even have a tattoo of her so you can see oh, that's beautiful that's beautiful work Thank you. Yeah, I got it done in LA. Um, but yeah, and then, then this became my full-time job and I got like relatively successful and I, I love being Tomie, but I never thought that I would be. So it's kind of crazy. <laughs> well, you didn't think that this was going to be your life moving forward. Like what led you to at least start with like an OnlyFans? So at the time, um, I had just graduated college and I had been a stripper like part time um, for a couple of years on and off, like just to make extra money. My main job actually was working at a nonprofit um, for unhoused young adults. So I worked with like I, I was like a, a housing advocate. I worked with homeless people. Then the pandemic hit 2020. Immediately I got laid off. And then immediately the clubs closed. And so I was unemployed like right away. Um, and I was fresh out of college. So I saw my friends who are dancers. Um, they immediately made OnlyFans accounts. And I actually was really hesitant at first. I was like, sh like I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so shy. Like I, don't, like, I don't know if I can put that out there. Like, what if my parents find out? I was like really anxious about it. Um, and then I saw how well my friends were starting to do. And they were saying stuff like, you need to get on right now because it's the pandemic. This is the time, like you can make a lot of money. And I was like, so I, so I, got, I decided to just go ahead and bite the bullet. The person who encouraged me actually is Emma Magnolia, who is a really successful adult creator. Wow. Yeah, or a star. That, that's, that's a heck of a name to, to back you and to encourage you to move forward. How, how did that relationship start? <laughs> At the time, she wasn't Emma Magnolia. At the time, we were just friends. Oh, At the time, she was just my friend. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's wild. So uh, starting off as a, like going further back, you, you started off as a stripper uh, and, you know, helping those in need. You, you're basically wearing two different masks uh, on any given day. It's uh, yeah. quite the talent you have. I was very busy. <laughs> yes, I understand. I was very caffeinated. <laughs> uh, okay, so if you don't mind me going further back, because like I, I like to get to the root of things here, uh, like st stripping is uh, like kind of the gateway into uh, for for some people the adult industry. Uh, what led you to start there? I was already working at um, the shelter as a resident assistant. I loved my job, but I did not make a lot of money. But it, it, that was really the main reason. Um, I wasn't making a lot of money. I was looking for other opportunities. And my friend, who is now Emma Magnolia, but at the time we were just, we, we were in, Ar we lived in Arkansas. Like, oh, wow. Um, yeah, we, we lived in Arkansas at the time. Yeah. And she was a stripper and uh, we were already close friends. And she told me, like, you would do really well. You're really pretty. You're, you'd be the only Asian girl in the club. <laughs> um, like, why don't you try it out? And I was like, okay. So I, I decided to go, and I, I actually worked at the club that she worked at. We worked together for a little while, um, pretty briefly. But I did really well, and so I just kept trying to to do it mm. at her clubs, yeah. Uh, going through my notes, uh, like, not only uh, are you – 
uh, most likely the only Asian up on the stage at that club. But also it says here that I should bring up the fact that you're tall. Yes. How tall is tall? I'm five nine. That's tall. <laughs> And that's that's not including heels, so that puts you what above six? In six inch heels, yeah, I would be six. I would be at least like I'm bad at math, over six feet tall. <laughs> so, so I, I'm assuming there's advantages to having uh, the ability to perform up on stage, but also have the height. There are pros and cons. I mean, you know, some guys prefer petite short women, right? Mm-hmm. So it's all about. But I definitely felt like I got a lot of attention, like visually. Like when you're taller, I feel like people do see you more. Right. And I've always tried to use that to my advantage. Um, I definitely stand out, I feel like, in the adult industry because nobody really looks like me. I'm a really tall, curvy Asian woman. <laughs> uh, with that, okay, so moving forward to where you are currently, uh, you stated that uh, you never really thought that you would actually make it this far or even consider this as a lifestyle. And now you're moving into uh, you know, bigger productions, as it were. Uh, instead of uh, OnlyFans and working on your own. Uh, how has that been so far? And uh, what's what's been like the, the mindset and the experience moving forward? Well, I, I did two scenes with Reality Kings. Um, those are my first pro scenes. I had a great time. I enjoyed it. And I, I went into it viewing it as like a learning experience and kind of a way for me to determine if I wanted to do more or not. Mm-hmm. And... I liked it. I thought it was really interesting seeing the way the porn is produced behind the scenes, like mainstream porn. I never saw that before. I definitely want to keep doing OnlyFans and focus on that. I really like making my own content and I love amateur. Um, I like to just have fun with it, you know? So yeah, I, I really have to, like I owe it to the adult industry for really helping me come out of my shell. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was, I was pretty shy when I started out. Um, and I was very, I feel like I was always very sexual, but shy about it Mm -hmm. and did not really have like, I wasn't always like super expressive about it. Um, and being in the adult industry, it's like, I'm just always surrounded by open-minded people who are also like freaks and perverts. And I like, love that. Yeah. I guess it just literally just be myself. No judgment. With your exclusive content on OnlyFans and the stuff that you create and produce, uh, what's the community like that follows you and supports you? And like, do you do custom work or is it all uh, from your own mind? Mostly it's just from my own mind. I, I really value one-on-one interaction on my OnlyFans actually. So a lot of times it's just me messaging people and like, like sharing pics and videos back and forth with people. I do make solo content. I like collabing with people and making sex tapes and selling those people really love that Mm. Um, and i do do customs as well yeah but it's it's mostly i would say i've mostly done sex tapes with other people and i sell those and my fans love that and then i just interact with my fans so i love sexing (laughs) recently it says that uh, you actually wrote an article on body neutrality and marketing and this seems like something that uh, not only is like uh, body positive, but also could really help those who are looking to kind of push their product or push themselves in any sort of industry, not just in the adult industry. What what led you to put pen to paper and create this article? That's funny because I actually I used to be a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> I didn't mention that. And while, while I was in college, I worked as a news reporter professionally because I was studying journalism. Yeah. Wow. Um, so doing this was kind of just like going full circle, like returning to what I literally what originally was going to do. I thought that was going to be my career, okay. was journalism. And then I was a news reporter, and then I was like, I kind of don't want to do this. But anyway, like, no, I just got the opportunity from like my PR and I jumped on it because I thought it would be fun. I love writing, Mm -hmm. um, familiar to me. Um, What I, what was asked of me was to write a column that would provide like useful, like advice for other creators and performers in the adult industry. And I tried to think of a few ideas and I kind of landed on marketing yourself 
and your body while detaching your self-worth from the beauty standards that you're considering in your marketing, basically. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe it's like, it just is something that's personal to me. Like I said, like I'm a all natural, curvy, tall Asian woman. It can be, it can be hard when you're in an industry that like, at least when it comes to mainstream porn, the beauty standards can be kind of narrow, mm -hmm. right? So um, I, I had to learn pretty quickly making and marketing my own content, like where, how to find my niche so that I'm not trying to like just copy other people like who have different audiences than me or set myself up for failure. Um, so I wanted to write about that experience and also maybe like provide some advice to people. I, I just, I hear all the time from people like, my friends and even other creators say stuff like, oh, like, I, I wish I could be like, you know, in the adult industry, but I just don't have the body for it. Or or even small creators who are already in the industry will say like, oh, like, you know, it's so hard for me to get ahead and succeed because I have like a plus size body or because like, I don't, I'm not fit enough. And I just don't have the look, you know, it's like so hard. And I think those are valid concerns, but I found through my experience that like, it's like 80% of it is marketing. Like, yeah, sure, you gotta be like, you can't, you know, you gotta keep up your appearances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, you know, take care of yourself, um, make sure you look your best always, but 80% of it is marketing and there is an audience for every type of look. And like, once you like find that, like those individuals will be so eager to support you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's a very rare occasion when you, uh, meet someone or come across someone who has a very finite idea of what they are attracted to. Like there, everyone out there, including myself and dare I say anyone watching this or listening to this right now has a moderately to vast broad spectrum of what they consider as attractive. What, what is important and I, I agree wholeheartedly is marketing and also uh you know getting yourself out there and showing either the confidence or or supporting yourself and believing in yourself be it if you're coming across as shy or timid but still having the ability to get yourself out there is yeah absolutely like majority of the battle yeah i wholeheartedly agree and, and projecting confidence is so important it's, it's a hard it's a skill that you gotta like practice <laughs> Yeah. So uh, with, with that, I can concur that uh, journalism, like I, I work in the entertainment side of uh, mainstream media. On the news side of mainstream media, it is a slaughterhouse. <laughs> it is stressful. It is tense. It is deadline, deadline, deadline. And you're held to an understandably very high bar of professionalism. So yeah, yeah like... Kudos to you for for at least venturing down that path, but at the same time, like yeah, I do not blame you for like nope, this is not for me. I know, and it's like I'm at such a different place in my life now. <laughs> it's like I, I'm doing the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, it's a lot more fun on the entertainment side. I mean, like as you can yeah. tell, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, I like your cyberpunk shirt, by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I had the special order this just to get it, just to get it, and I was lucky that uh, it actually was the proper size. Sometimes you order something from overseas. It's like I'm ordering a large. Nope, this is a Canadian small. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Are you much of a gamer? Yes, I love. Um, I, I, that's why I noticed your cyberpunk shirt. I like. Well, I like the series more than the game. <laughs> oh, the game. like Edge Runners on Netflix. Yeah, I, I played the game when it came out, um, but that was back when it was like bad. Like there was a lot of bugs and stuff. I I um I concur. Uh, I played the game when it launched too, and I just kind of chalked it up as in like. I paid 60 bucks for this piece of shit. I'm just going to accept it as the fact that this is the cyberpunk world and that guy's pointing out and like sticking out of the wall because that's the way it is, you know? So yeah. thank, thank you. But, um, so you play, you played cyberpunk when you try, uh, when it first came out. Um, but mm -hmm. like, what do you, do you play games on a regular basis? 
Yeah, um, I like to play RPGs, and I like cozy games, too, okay. like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley and stuff like that. Um, I started playing Tears of the Kingdom recently. Um, I used to play more... Like, I used to play MMORPGs and MOBAs oh, when wow. I was a teenager. I don't anymore because it sucked up a lot of my time, and it was stressful. Like, I used to play League of Legends, and that game is so stressful. <laughs> I I have a uh, League of Legends uh, full cosplay outfit, um, and uh, I I'm very familiar with the game, and yeah, like MMORPGs uh, can take up a whole bunch of time. Yeah, because you have to grind so much, and it's the the competitive games, the MOBAs. I just, oh my god, I can't do it anymore. It's like too stressful. Um, but wait, which which character did you cosplay? Um, <laughs> You know, I bring it up, and for the life of me, I can't think of the name because I haven't actually worn the cosplay costume in, like, years. Uh, it's it's the haunted suit of armor. Like, I'm looking at a skull right now. Haunted suit super- Oh, I forgot his name, too. <laughs> I gotta Whoa. prove it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, so I have the full suit, um, and it. That's crazy. Did you make that? No, no. I wish I could say I made that. Uh, this was actually I bought it off of a buddy of mine who made it. It's actually made out of uh, floor mats. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, well, I play. I cosplay Ari. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Um, oh, I always want. Ari because she's Korean and I'm Korean and she's the nine-tailed fox, which I thought is sexy and badass. <laughs> oh, there you go. Rock what you got. Um, I, I just realized the name. It's Mordekaiser. Oh, Mordekaiser, yeah. No, yeah. I've never played Kaiser. I always played the girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, so you dress up, like, do you cosplay? Like, I, I can't believe we're getting into this tangent here, but you cosplay? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. We're talking about video games, now we're talking about cosplaying. Yes, I do. Um, I used to cosplay a lot more. Like I said, like as a teenager, I was deep into nerd culture. Like I was gaming every day. I cosplayed all the time. I have less time for that now, but I really try to um, incorporate cosplay into my content. Well, that's cool. It's 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 fun to be creative like that, and it gives you a completely different avenue of uh, content as well as you know you reach a more broader audience. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's fun. I, I like to keep work fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, just to clarify, this is the only uh, cosplay I've ever purchased. I have different sets of cosplay that I've actually uh, worked on uh, either solo or with my girlfriend. So I, I'm not just buying shit. <laughs> just... <laughs> but anyway, um, I, I don't know if we've gotten off track or this is the best interview I've ever had. Um, so, uh, with, uh, everything that's gone on, you wrote that, wrote that article, which brings you full circle back to your journalism roots. Also, you have a, uh, a great fan base and support group, and you're delving more into, uh, mainstream, uh, adult content for lack of a better term. Uh, what is it that you're hoping to uh, achieve and complete within the next maybe couple of weeks, couple of months, or even where you want to be within the next year? Yeah, I want to do some more pro scenes. Um, my goal is to do a browser scene. So within the next year, hope that happens. Um, I've done three Mind Geek scenes so far, so I'm going to continue doing more of those. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, yeah, I, I think that I'm just going to keep doing my OnlyFans thing. I really want to grow my fan sites and I want to connect with my fans more. That's always been my priority and it's just, it's going to continue to be my priority. Um, yeah, um, I think I also might do another scene with Crash Pad within the next year. That's a small queer indie porn studio that um, I'm a big fan of. So that will be coming out. Um, within a year probably and yeah and I'll just like keep um trying to get nominated for awards and we'll see <laughs> yeah I want to ask you something fun and this is something I've been asking my guests lately uh 
what is something that your fans and your audience doesn't know about you simply because they just haven't asked? Do you have a special skill or ability or do you have a hobby that is just like something that someone wouldn't expect? Hmm. That is a fun question. Something that my fans haven't even asked me. They ask me a lot of questions. <laughs> I believe it. Okay, this is a random deep cut about me. Um, I won a cornbread contest when I lived in Arkansas. Like I made, cause I, <laughs> I have like a, a, I have a family recipe for cornbread, and I like made it, and I won, and I like entered. I got into the state cornbread festival. Okay. So I like was serving my cornbread at the Arkansas State Cornbread Festival, which is and I got I got like free merch and everything. I have an apron that says Arkansas Cornbread Festival. That's so, so yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> I mentioned that to people. They're like they're very I don't know, they just look at me and they're like, oh <laughs> like you I would not expect that from you. So you 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 are able to create champion level cornbread. Yeah. That is <laughs> that is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Cool. I wouldn't yeah, again, I would never have expected that. That's why I like asking this question because you get some of the most random uh answers out there. I, I, there was a uh, content creator who um I interviewed a little while ago who's like she is she is a registered nurse and she's a she's a cosplayer and she plays video games online I asked her the question she goes I know how to swing dance no one has ever asked me if I know how to dance I know how to swing dance at a competitive level that's so funny that's crazy yeah so awesome that's a great answer <laughs> We'll wrap this up by, uh, you know, giving you an opportunity to let people know where they can find you and where they can purchase and enjoy your content. Yeah, absolutely. My main platform is OnlyFans. Um, so that would be OnlyFans.com slash Tomie Baby Doll. That's T-O-M-I-E Baby Doll. And you can pretty much find me um, on any platform with that exact same username. So I also have a Fansly. I have a many vids. I'm about to get on Pornhub. Um, and I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Awesome. You ever think about going over to Threads? That's the new social media. Oh, yes. Uh, how can I forget? I just started a Threads. <laughs> I, I really appreciate the time uh, that you've uh, allotted me today. Uh, thank you so much, Tomie. And uh, good luck in all your future endeavors and hopefully maybe at one point in time i don't know if uh, our video game tags will ever cross paths but uh, i'd be happy to team up with you maybe dust off an old mmo mmorpg <laughs> at some point in time yeah. who knows maybe I'll be, I'll be your support thank you i'm gonna need it <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for having me this is very fun my pleasure Thanks for being a part of another edition of the Media Jack podcast. Remember, this is an audio video experience. So if you would like to listen to more or watch another episode, you can find all the links available at themediajack.ca. While you're there, you can also check out the store and some merch, just like this shirt that I'm wearing that you can only see if you're watching the video. But go to themediajack.ca to see the store and what's available. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for everyone who supports me on Patreon. And I will catch you next time. Take care.